If cold hard cash is the yardstick, then Normie Rowe is Australia's most valuable teenager. This was his farewell at Melbourne Airport as he left for the bigger money of London. Normie Rowe is 19, but at 19 he's an old hand at manipulating teenage hysteria. He has the magic on stage that scores of hopeful teenage singers envy. I guess I was just one of the lucky ones, he says. There was a boom, and I just rode the crest of it. Normie Rowe is only one of a dozen pop singing idols that thousands of Australian teenage girls believe they're in love with. Well, some vary. I love a few, and others I just like. As I say, love, well, you know, I think I love them. I really adore them. Others, I, you know, I like them. To appear at a concert in safety now, Normie Rowe needs nearly a dozen bouncers and policemen to hold back the fans. His fans are nearly all girls. Most of them are in their early teens, many of them only 13. Their worshipping of pop stars, their dedication to the driving beat of deafening guitar amplifiers and drums, these are just some of the things that drive a wedge between many teenagers and their parents today. Uh, you can't put up with your parents these days, you know, a lot. But when they um, ask you where you're going out, they just, you know, you don't know what to say because if you say you're going out to a dance or something, they think something wrong by it. I think most, most teenagers today like, you know, want to have sex and um, they, they don't seem to worry about whether they're married or not, you know. Does virginity matter very much anymore? Um, no, I don't think so. Not really? Well, do you score any points these days for being a virgin? Uh, no, not really, no. Not really. Most teenagers today, their parents don't understand about sex and um, what they feel about it, and they don't teach their children what to do when things crop up, you know, when you go out with boys. Most teenagers who have sex before they are married, but I don't think it's very important. You just make up your mind to be a virgin and you remain that way. What do you find some of the most exciting things about being a teenager now? All the music, the clothes, boys. There's plenty of things. In this national newspaper, printed every Saturday in Melbourne, parents and oldies have no say at all. This newspaper has yet to become the Bible of Australia's youth, but it already sells 40,000 copies around Australia every week. It's called Go Set, and it aims to cater solely for the tastes of the active teen and twenty set. In its first edition last February, it told its readers, now is the time to really break loose from the oldies. Now seven months old, Go Set deals almost exclusively with music and fashions. Its columnists write about jazz, folk singing, rhythm and blues, the current pop idols and their TV shows. Its editor, Tony Schäubler, is 21. Before he started the paper, he was studying zoology at Monash University, where he worked for three years on the university newspaper. Gosset's appearance came at a time when most established newspapers were moving into the teenage market too. Seven weeks after it hit the streets, GoSet moved into bigger offices here at St Kilda. Every member of its staff is under 25. It now has 15 people working full-time and another 10 working part-time. As well as giving disc jockeys yet another outlet as columnists, GoSet has provided opportunities for its own staff. Honey Lee, its fashion writer, is 18. Colin Beard is Go Set's photographer, a job that has its hazards. Well, there's always the dangers of um, the screaming of the kids when they get sort of hysterical. Uh, 
the St. Norman Road concerts, Rolling Stones, being trapped between the star and the uh, kids as a stampede on the stage. Uh, several times I've been caught in such situations and damaged quite a lot of equipment. I've always come out of it all right myself, apart from a few bruises, but I've um, smashed a couple of flash units. And um, I'm getting quite used to it though, of course, now. I'm sort of ex knowing when to expect it and uh, run for the nearest sort of safe place. Now, honey, how much power do you think you wield in the fashion scene among teenagers? Well, at the moment, not very much, but I hope to have as much power that the kids are going to follow me every word I say and sort of like if Honey says that dress is good then it's good and they're all going to run out and buy it and that the fashion house is going to have faith in me and sort of going to give me anything I want and be really cooperative. I mean already I've sort of had tons of letters from kids sort of saying how much they like the dresses and everything I show and where they can get them. Earlier GoSet's editor Tony Schäubler tried to interest teenagers in writing about the problems facing the world today. The response was dismal. It seems that stories about pop stars and their music were what his readers really wanted. Yes, we, we were rather disappointed, but I think the fault was mainly ours that we started off too early when teenagers hadn't identified themselves as much as they have now with the paper. They weren't quite sure who was running it, but uh, now that it's established that it's uh, written by people like them, they're far more willing to talk. You claim that you can communicate with teenagers in a way that no other Australians can. Now, what do you see as teenagers' morals today? I think teenagers in general don't quite know um, what, what their morals are. They're at the stage where they're thoroughly disillusioned with uh, society as a whole, the, the, social, um, the values of, uh, or the moral values of society, because they get held up to them in school and in church, uh, Christian morality, and if they see that the, the rest of the world, the older people, just aren't taking it seriously. Uh, the press and television, everything is... Uh, doing the exact opposite. How much of this bright young world do you think these teenagers will carry with them into their adult life? I think the main thing that they'll carry on is the fact that young ideas and the young outlook is something that can be taken seriously. That what The ideas that young people have that they can put into practice, practice in the world at large. Um, and this sort of thing in the past I think where young people haven't been given the go that they, that they can get now. Electronic recording equipment used to capture this sound is worth $20,000. Some weeks it's used for 60 hours and a never-ending search for the different sound that will sell. And behind all the top-line artists, there's a manager. In this case, a woman, Carol West. Lynn Randall, she was washing my hair in a hairdressing salon and she just had a look and I was told she had a good voice. She had the voice, and of course she's got a certain look that we try to make the kids follow. Um, we try and be a little bit ahead of all the artists or, and all the kids, and she wears a look, and then we find the kids follow into uh, wearing whatever it happens to be, bell-bottom pants, or it happens to be backless dresses or striped tops. Uh, she started quite a few fashions in Melbourne. Lynn Randell is 16. Her earnings each week are between $300 and $400. A lot of this goes in tax, clothes, taxi fares, phone calls and entertainment. And there's a 15% cut for her manager, Carol West. Carol West is also the manager or agent for several other singers and groups. They, um, you've, 
they're certainly a person that you've just got to mould into doing what they're told. And it's a lot easier to do this with somebody who is willing to do what they're told. It's very difficult to get an artist to be a star if they're not willing to do what they're being told and have confidence in you and believe in what you're trying to tell them. If they've got that confidence, then they can go on and you can help them. How big-headed do these young stars get? I think they get very big-headed. Uh, they start off, they're not, and then they start reading their publicity and you make their publicity sound good and then they read about themselves and they start believing it. Uh, they come down to earth after a while, but they seem to go through a stage where they're so big-headed you just can't get through to them for a while. And uh, usually ends up in quite an argument and then they come down to earth and they realise that they've got to work and they've, uh, nobody's ever going to make it just by standing there and being pretty. What sort of things do you write about in their publicity that simply aren't true? Well, it's true, but you, you, you bend it a little and romance it a little, so it sounds a lot more glamorous than it actually is. Uh, you never write about the hard work that goes into uh, going to lessons, makeup lessons for a girl, singing lessons, dancing lessons. The, the time that is spent every day walking around, seeing how your record's going, being pleasant to people that sometimes perhaps you don't even like. Uh, and just generally, uh, well, conning people into believing in what you're trying to believe in too. <laughs> Melbourne now claims to be the pop music capital of Australia, a title once held by Sydney. Melbourne is where the action is, and most of the action centres around Melbourne's discotheques. Now about 40 discotheques in Melbourne, sprinkled around from the heart of the city to the outer suburbs. Most of them have live bands and singers as well as playing the latest discs. The average admission price is a dollar a head. The discotheques are where the trendsetters go for stimulation and excitement. This one aims at being most quaintly wild and most heavenly swinging. This is part of the world of which Gosset newspaper wrote, we were born into this type of world and have never known anything else but the high speed, high pressure way of life we find around us. In this high pressure world of the young, there are new demands. Special haircuts for boys is one demand being met at Jill's clip joint. During the day, Jill works at a hairdressing salon, but after hours at home, she clips up to 20 boys' heads a week. The price, seven shillings for a haircut, straightening and tinting are extras. Many of her clients won't trust barbers and find ladies' salons turn them away. Let's look the part. How is the biting eye going? Oh, great, really great. You making lots of money? Oh, no, I think I'll get a cut like uh, Cliff Richards. It looks, uh, you know, it's fairly short, it looks neat. Yeah, I think I might get my cut again like Mar Mia Farrah's, as the top of it, keep it short on the front and uh, keep it long at the yeah. back. You want to let it grow a bit longer over your ears and keep it thinned down a bit. Why don't you get yours shaped over your ears like Ronnie Burns's? No, um... No, because Cliff Richards is too short across the top of the ears. Oh, I wouldn't. Had a, a marvellous group. You probably, have you had them at the discotheque yet? The, um... Which one's that? Running, jumping, standing still. Oh, yeah. They're pretty mad, huh? The wildest singer you've ever seen. <laughs> hair everywhere. I'd like to get stuck into his hair. Well, that's the one that looks like Bob Dylan, isn't it? He's got hair everywhere. You yeah. can't even come near him. Crazy guy. Yeah, short, short it on the front and uh, came back in the middle. It's caught on the big whale, this discotheque. Yeah, what do you think in opposition to the others, though? As far as crowds are concerned? Oh, you know, I think everybody's got their crowd and I don't think it matters very much. I think it'll stay, you know. Mm. In fact, I think it'll get better before it gets worse, really. Yeah, it'll make a lot of money for me anyway. <laughs> 
Yeah, that's right. Plenty of heads to go. Yeah. One big Melbourne department store took a thirsty look at the teenage scene and this was the result. A mod fashion shop for young men. <laughs> and the pop scene personalities were on hand to promote the opening. Personalities like Clem McCartney, a lead singer with the Twilights. He signed several hundred autographs a week, something he didn't do while he was an apprentice TV technician. He now earns more than $100 a week and clears about 60 for himself. There's plenty of gas trousers just over there. I don't think that's suit me. You must buy something this morning, by the way. Yeah. Just know you know coming in here unless you're going to buy just something. Just for you. Oh, yeah. Well, buy me something. Oh, oh boy. Oh, yeah, you are. Just get a trousers over there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We've got plenty of money. We've got to go to the pictures. We've got to be in all that time. There are good profits to be made for selling what's in to the movers. Or in other words, selling the wildest breakaway gear to the switched-on go set of square old Melbourne. Or at least, that's what the publicity said. Mr Ted Waterman is one of the directors of this department store. Well, mainly uh, we copied overseas trends because this trend came from Carnaby Street, London. And uh, we sent a young man over there to, you know, exclusively buy and bring back the atmosphere for this particular shop. And then we put the, uh, you know, the designing of the shop and clothes and buying in the hands of young people in the age groups of 19, 20 and 21. And they came up with the designs and the general atmosphere for the shop. We passed it very quickly. In fact, I think it's almost three weeks since we started to work on this shop from the point of view of decor and setting it up. What sort of a market do you think you'll be catering for? Who will be able to spend money here? all young people, uh, mainly in the age groups from about 14 to 25. But of course then it depends whether you're with it. You see quite a few people in the age groups of 30, 35 coming in here and probably if they've got the right sort of figures they'll be able to buy the clothes. One paradox of this push-button age of automation is that a go-go dancer can earn as much as $20 for half an hour's hard work. For some, the go-go is not just a dance, nor a way of life, but simply just another job. One of Melbourne's more prominent go-go dancers, Denise Drysdale, has earned as much as $400 in one week from fashion parades, TV shows, singing and teaching the go-go. Now, remember that you've got to keep Keep counting for your steps. Now relax your back and flop your head round. The idea, people aren't going to look at anything else but your head. They don't want to see feet dancing. They don't want to see your head and a smile. Whatever you do. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The next step is the monkey. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. At the height now, of the go-go boom, this class in Melbourne had 110 pupils. It claims to be Australia's only go-go school. Second. Ready, set, go. One, two, three, four. 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 One, two, three. One, two. Throb the heads. Get that hair going. One, two, three, four. One, two. Now relax your back. The school started nearly four months ago. The fee is one dollar twenty an hour. Of the 300 girls who've attended lessons, 15 have found regular work. There have been 
many dropouts, but should a girl finish the course, she can expect a minimum rate of $10 a night as a go-go dancer, if she can find work. As well as its swinging discotheques, Melbourne now has about 60 Saturday night dancers. This was one of the latest to open. It aims at running a dance for more than 1,500 teenagers with a discotheque atmosphere. The night it opened, Normie Rowe made his farewell appearance here. But that wasn't the only reason the management wanted half a dozen bouncers and two police wagons standing by. At most of the discotheques and dancers, there's the danger of brawls between the Sharpies and the mods. The mods tend to have long hair and wear mod gear. The sharpies have short hair and sometimes baggy trousers. The sharpies are not allowed in dances because they know they always fight and that. So. Uh, they don't let them come in dances, so they want the Sharpies to the outside for them. They, there's never an open side, you see. The Sharpies always, you know, they hide. Then uh, send one, in, one bloke in, pick the fight. They might think, oh, we could take care of this bloke, you know. And uh, so then uh, when the mods pick it, because they just fight back, so they all come out hiding. How vicious do these fights get? Oh, pretty vicious. A couple of chaps the other week, a couple of mods have just got in hospital for with uh, Bruised ribs, a uh, few cuts. What do they use to fight with? Oh, steel bars, bike chains, and bricks, house bricks. So you keep out of their way, do you? Oh, we have to, unless we've got an even side just to fight back. Most Saturday nights, the Sharpies stand around in the shadows outside the discotheques that ban them. This one keeps a bouncer called Terry at the door. Terry's six foot six and weighs 18 and a half stone. Well, they, they call us queers, sharpies, idiots, and they sling off us just because we're well dressed. What do you call them? Oh, well, what do you reckon? What do they look like? Do you want me to say, well, there's cameras on me? <laughs> what normally happens when you meet a mod in the street? Well, they look at you once, you ignore them. They look at you twice, you ask them what they want. They look at you a third time, you block them. And what usually happens after you block them? They start falling, most of them. <laughs> <laughs> How much strife have you got into talking to mods in the street? What's the strife? Oh, I've been in a couple of fights. What's what happened in that? I've got done a couple of times, and so has a couple of the uh, mods have got done. How rough have these fights been? Fairly rough. Well, how rough? Rough enough to put the kids in hospital. Well, what sort of injuries did they get when you were involved? Oh, a couple of been, uh, kids been cut cut eye and had stitches in his forehead and everything. He's terribly tough. Of all the criticism aimed at teenagers today, most of it centres on sex. How much free love is there among teenage stars today? I think it's quite a bit. They, uh, all the, the girls, I've seen them chase after a lot of the male artists particularly, and they'd go to any lengths, these kids, to just be with them. And I suppose, if, well, if I was a boy, I'd be in it too. What sort of lengths do they go to, to sleep with their teenage stars? Oh, they hide in showers, they uh, sneak into rooms, uh, they hide under the... In, they get into a bed and they hide in the bed and the guys come in and there are these girls. They, they just don't care uh, in amongst... Well, it's, it's a certain type of girl, too. And I don't think... The trouble is that the artists have no respect for these girls. Uh, so they just play it along just like they do, and, and I don't think it's good. But uh, it's going to happen, and uh, I know if I was a boy, I'd be, I'd be part of it too. Uh, I think it's sort of fun for them. But they grow out of that stage, and they become uh, more adult, and then they settle down to liking the right sort of girls. Carol, what do you find is the sort of general attitude towards sex among these teenage stars and their following? 
Well, I think it's changed tremendously from what it used to be to today. They discuss sex quite freely. They uh, practice it quite freely. They don't seem to have terribly many moral principles amongst them. Uh, I think I see a lot of it because the boys are inclined to forget that I'm a girl and they just sort of treat me as another one of the boys, when we're, particularly when we're on tour. And some of the things that go on well, uh, really are quite disgusting and they practice any sort of free love and it doesn't seem to matter to them, whereas it was sort of kind of a sacred thing when, when I was a teenager anyway. And I know my mother used to be fairly strict with me. Uh, but today it's just discussed, the pill is discussed, uh, all the different means of contraceptives are discussed quite freely amongst the kids. How young are some of the girls these days who are taking the pill? I don't know how young they are. I know how young they are, the girls that uh, will sleep with any of the boys or any of the artists, and they are well and truly below age. They'd be ranged from 14 and up. Well, they'd be, some of them might even be younger. But that's only my guess at looking at them. They only look about 14. They only act about 14. Uh, when you take a young rock and roll star to another state, how many girls would be wanting to sleep with him? Most of the girls at the dances. Um, but not many of them try. There would only be maybe half a dozen girls at each dance that ever actually come back and be in any of the things that happen. Uh, I don't suppose there'd be any more than about six or seven of them would come back to the hotel or go to that links. Uh, most of the girls, if they had the opportunity, but uh, they, they hang around, they wait. And sometimes they've got to wait for quite a long time because the boys sit around themselves and they have a drink. So it takes that length of time to get back to the hotel and it takes a bit of patience on the girls' part to wait that long. Uh, and then they're just there. What about with girl stars? Do, are there lots of boys wanting to sleep with them? I don't think it happens quite so much with the girls. I think it's, uh, I think then it happens with uh, the more adult people who are on the executive, well, can I say executive side of things, who want to sleep with the girls. It's not the teenage stars in this case. It's uh, the, the certain people that say, well, we will do this for you if you will sleep with me, or they don't put it quite as crudely as that, but that's what they mean anyway. Uh, I know I even used to get this when I first started. Uh, I found it very difficult because it was a matter of if you did, well, we will, and I wasn't going to, so they didn't, and I had a lot of trouble. Uh, but I, I think I've overcome it now because they've got used to me, and I, I'm more a man. They treat me like a man, and they don't think about it. But uh, I know this happens to the girl artists. Uh, with my artist, I tried to protect them from it, and it, it, it's, well, it's lucky because they, they, they start at me, and then I've got a few answers, because I've had a few more years' experience than the 16-year-old singer. An ever-widening gap now separates teenagers from the people they call the oldies. But who is out of step? A lot depends on who's calling the tune, and plenty of the tune callers who are making profits today are oldies themselves. 